Good evening, everyone. I, Muskan Dimbri, would like to welcome you all to today's webinar on women warrior in defense forces from boots on ground to flying fighter jets on the occasion of National Women's Day hosted by National Service Scheme, Shivaji College. We at Shivaji College, a premier institute of University of Delhi, accredited with grade A by NAC, believe in selfless community service and making a significant contribution to the society. In NSS, students and faculty work together to lend a helping hand to the community. The motto of NSS, not me, but you, reflects a sense of democratic living and upholds the need for selfless service. Just a little housekeeping before we get started. Participants are required to keep their audio and video off throughout the event so as to avoid any streaming errors. If you have any questions, you can pose them in the chat box that will be taken at the end of the session. Kindly fill the feedback form that will be circulated at the end in the chat box. We request your cooperation in conducting this virtual event smoothly. I would like to welcome our speaker, Captain Yashika Hatwal Tyagi, with a virtual bouquet as a token of gratitude. Thank you. Now, I would also request all the participants in the meeting to rise for the national anthem. Jaya Gana Mana Adhina Ayaka Jaya He Bharat Bhagya Vidhata Punjab Sindh Gujarat Maratha Dravida Uttkala Vanga Vindya Himachala Yamuna Ganga Uchala Jaladhi Taranga तव शुभ नामे जागे तव शुभ आशीष मागे गाहे तव जय गाधा जन गण मंगल दायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता जय हे जय हे जय हे I would now like to invite Urvashi ma'am. Uh, thank you, Ms. Khan. Uh, I take this opportunity to thank our principal, sir, Dr. Shiv Kumar Sehdev, and our program officer, Dr. Ruchira Dhingra, for having given me this opportunity to welcome our esteemed speaker of the day, Captain Yashika Hatpal Tyagi. She is a first lady officer from the logistics wing of Indian Army, who is recognized for her contribution during the Operation Vijay, during the War of Kargil, and many more successful operations of the Indian Army. She is a living example of the strength of a woman who, through her courage and determination, can go to any extent to achieve her goals in life. And I quote Dr. APJ Abul Kalam A dream is not which you see while sleeping. It is something which does not let you sleep. We are honored to have you here, ma'am. And we are keenly looking forward to hear from you. And we thank you sincerely for sparing your valuable time for us. Jai Hind. I request Ms. Khan to come further. Thank you so much, ma'am, for your thoughtful words. I would now like to introduce our speaker for the day, Captain Yashika Hatwal Tyagi. Captain Yashika Hatwal Tyagi has been commissioned into Army Ordnance Corps in 1994. She was the contingent commander and was awarded silver medal during the passing out parade of officers training academy in Chennai. She has also volunteered for Operation Rhino and served the counterinsurgency operation area of Northeast India. Thereafter, she became the first lady officer to be posted to a high altitude area in an extreme climate and also the first lady officer to serve the nation in OP Vijay. Despite being pregnant, she fought shoulder to shoulder and became the first lady officer to earn a battle report. She hung a uniform in 2000 and is currently pursuing her passion to work in the domain of training and community development. She has done many events and also been a part of the prestigious platforms like TEDx, Josh Talk and Radio City FM. Without any further delay, I would like to welcome her. Over to you, ma'am. Jai Hind. Thank you so much, Muskan. Thank you so much, Ruchira ma'am. And thank you so much to the entire administrative staff of Shivaji College. 
it is a huge platform for me because I get to speak to all the bright and amazing students of Shivaji College, Delhi University. So let us begin. Let us begin today's event. The topic that is chosen is women warriors. Now, women warriors have been there throughout. If we go back in history, I'm sure many history students would also be listening to this talk. Well, when we think of Chandragupta Maurya, we know that he had this complete army of the bodyguards who were trained women warriors. Let us not go very far back into the history, but just 85 years before the great 1857, the first war of independence that we call, just 85 years before that, in Shivaganga, there was the queen called Velu Nechiar. Have you heard of it? Velu Nechiar was a great warrior queen whose army commander was a magnificent woman with great strength and power called Kuili. Kuili is known for her bravery. Kuili is known for her strength of strategizing. There's a very, very awe-inspiring and hair-raising story about Kuili. I'll take two minutes in telling that story to you. Kuili and Velu Nechia planned to clear off the Shivaganga fort from Britishers. Britishers had taken over that fort after the death of Velu Nechia's husband. And she was made to leave the fort, but she wanted to get that fort back. So she and Queely planned an amazing operation. On one of the religious festivals, the gates of fort used to be open for the public to come and pray at the shrine inside the fort. So taking benefit of that festival, Velu Nechiar and Queely and a huge army of women warriors dressed up as the village ladies and got inside. So inside their dresses, they had hidden their swords and little spears. They were also carrying big canisters full of ghee, which they said that they would be offering it for the diya inside that shrine. They was planning in all of this. As they reached inside, the women warriors took out their swords and started fighting with the British soldiers. One after the other, the British soldiers were decimated. But what did Queenie do? Queenie had planned this all through. As she stood, the women warriors poured ghee on top of her. So she was drenched from her topmost hair till her till the nail of the toe. Upar se niche ta ghi se kuili ka pura sharir bhar gaya. And like this, she walked near the place where the ammunition was stored. One of the women warriors lit a diya and placed that light on her clothes. Kuili started burning. And in that, you know, in an awe-inspiring, fearsome picture that was portrayed of Kuili's hair, open, full of fire, each, each hair looking like a halo of fire around her, her clothes on fire, but a smile on her face. Kuili walked inside the ammunition dump. The British soldiers were totally taken aback. They did not know what is happening. Koili shan se chalti hui ammunition dump ke andar gai and with that fire on her body the entire ammunition started to burn and with loud explosions one after the other the entire ammunition dump was on fire that was Koili that is a woman warrior and we all salute that bravery after that Velu Nechiar 
got the control of the fort back and the rest is history and mind you all this happened 85 years before the great war of independence of 1857 so women warriors are not new to indian history what is new to indian history is women in defense forces of india of free india of independent india well so today as i begin i am certainly not going to put the 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 uh, huge paradigm of equality here i am not at all going to talk about women over men superiority male bashing not at all today's women's day celebration at shivaji college is commendable because here we will learn we will aim to walk equally together step by step one step each time and going forward i'll tell you a little bit about myself i wanted to join army ever since i was a little girl i lost my father who was also an army officer at an age of 7 we were three sisters my elder sister 9 years i was 7 years and my younger sister was just 5 when we lost our father in the service of the nation when his mortal remains came home he was still covered in his olive green uniform from that day onwards i wanted to wear the uniform just like him but it was not the time when girls were taken into army so everyone told me army is for boys and i said oh god someone please let me wear the uniform i used to write letters to prime minister that please allow lady officer allow girls to get into army well i do not know i do not know whether my letters had anything or any role to play but i know one thing for sure ek bahut famous dialogue hai ek hindi movie ka ki yadi kisi cheez ko aap shiddat se chahe तो पूरी कायनात उसे आपके लिए मौजूद कर देती है एंड सो वेन आई वॉन्टेड टू वेयर दूनिफॉर्म सो बैट आर्मी ओपन इट स्टेट फॉर वेमेन दर वॉज नाइन आई वॉज एट द राइट टाइम एट द राइट प्लेस एट द राइट एज ऑफिस ट्रेनिंग अकेडमी द हेलोड गेट्स वर ओपन एंड नाउ वेयरिंग ऑल इफ ब्रीज वॉज नॉट अ ड्रीम it was a reality i would be there as part of it it was like a dream come true and as i stepped inside the officers training academy i was living my dream tell me tell me honestly how many of us get the chance to live our dreams and here i was i was ready to take on this phase of my life as a project i wanted to make each minute count you know at that time when lady officers who were joining army in those initial batches we all were we all were crazy lot hamare andar junoon tha ek ek passion because each one of us knew that this is not a career that is going to be permanent we were well aware of the fact that this is not a permanent career because army had opened it only for short service commission lekin hamare andar to junoon tha chahe thode samay ke liye hi bas hame vardi pehnne ke liye milni chahiye thi and let me tell you this small batch of just 25 lady officers was a force to reckon with we were powered we were powered by some kind of some kind of inner energy so strong well of the training academy was a huge equalizer we were training equally with male cadets shoulder to shoulder of the training academy was also trying to find its zone as to how far lady cadets 
can be stretched on for the training. Mind you, they were very initiates and everyone was going on one step at a time, but certainly one step forward every time. So the only currency that time was sweat and blood and toil and broken nails and bleeding elbows and grazed knees but moving on every time you know there's a very there's a very funny incident one coming over the 10 foot high wall i'm short because i'm a pahadi i i am not very tall so climbing on that that you know wall was a huge deal for me so i kept jumping and tried to get over that wall stressed in my battle fatigues with a rifle at the back and it was an obstacle course and we had to do things maximum obstacles in minimum time so there was this whole lot of obstacles we were to complete maximum obstacles this meant that if i could not do that 10 foot high wall i could run around it and do another obstacle but no i did not want to give up i wanted to do that obstacle which was so difficult for me I kept climbing, I kept falling down. I kept trying to climb, kept falling down. Kabhi haath upar jata, pisal ke niche aata. Pair upar jata, pisal ke niche aata. Every time I was, I was bleeding from my hands. I was getting scratched all over. Finally, I could do it. I was there at the top and jumped over, ran ahead and completed one after the other, the other obstacles. Now, I had totally forgotten about this incident till almost 25 years later. Thanks to WhatsApp, the course mates groups got together. You know, the course mates got together on a WhatsApp group. And one of them said that, Yashika, do you know your name is at least taken once in my home every day? And I was surprised. I said, why? It's been 25 years that we have met last. How come I am a point of conversation? And he said that every day, every day I give your example to my little daughter. And I tell her that I remember Yashika from that obstacle course when she would not give up. And so your incident, this incident, among many others, is a source of motivation for my girl not to give up. Well, I'm just sharing this incident with you that sometimes we do not recollect. Sometimes we do not even remember small little incidences. But who knows? Ki hamare liye wo choti si baat ho sakti hai. Lekin shayad wahi choti si baat kisi ke liye ek inspiration or kisi ke liye ek yadgar lamha ban sakti hai. So, today I am not going to give you any yarn. I am just going to share lots and lots of stories with you. So, if you are up to it, then we are really going to have a great time today. Well, in Academy, there were a lot of difficult incidences, difficult times, difficult experiences, but some quite funny also like wearing shorts. Nowadays, it is very common for girls to wear shorts. But way back in 1994, wearing shorts was not such an everyday thing. And that also, I came from a very small town. And wearing shorts was not an everyday thing for us. Now, academy mein PT karni hai aur shorts pehni hai. So, that was one mental barrier that you know, it is it was difficult for us to climb over that mental barrier of wearing shorts, which is a very small thing today. But in that moment, everyone is looking at me. But in reality, nobody had time for us. Everyone, everyone in that academy was trying to go from one day to the other. So sometimes we feel that the whole world is thinking about us. But let me tell you, 
people do not have that kind of time to think about you every time so don't give yourself that much credit do your work without any stress without any tension and just move on lady cadets just dug on dug on into the reserves and by the time the training ended we were amazed to see our own progress mentally as well as physically during the passing out parade i was the contingent commander and i passed out with a medal of merit it is it is one of the high points for me because every day was a test and every day we moved on and remember this was a dream this was my dream and i wanted to work on myself as a project to do the best to live each day so my dear students when you get a chance to do something that you really want to do don't leave any stones unturned just go all out and do it now when i passed out from academy i kept volunteering for one difficult posting after another as muskan told you in my bio that i volunteered for operation rhino operation rhino took place in northeast and that was the time i realized my job as a logistics officer i realized the seriousness of my work that there is no margin for error there is no margin for error and our mistakes can come back home only in body bags our mistakes affect not only the soldiers but their parents their wives their children and sometimes the unborn children i volunteered for extreme cold climate and high altitude and so got posted to lay i was a prototype and knew that i am being watched i was put to various tests physical psychological professional but i was aware of the responsibility that was lying on my shoulders there was no time to behave lady like there was no time to behave main nahi kar sakti there was no time to play a woman card there was no time to play the card for asking for special treatment and that is what got me respect so another lesson for all of you there no one likes a woman card right not even not even women like when other women play the card of getting soft treatment of getting a treatment of you know um easy way ahead no and my generation demands out of all of you there stand up to yourself stand your ground prove yourself work hard to be taken as an equal do not only speak about equality prove it at every step and reach a point reach a point where you break the barriers reach a point where people respect you for your professionalism not only for your gender and that is when you will realize what equality is well as my tenure of two years at lay was coming to a close this was also the time that kargil war had broken out in the icy heights of lay and ladakh this was the time when pakistanis had taken control of the higher posts now was the time that regiments upon regiments of infantry were being brought in the sector either by air or by road my job as logistics officer was to equip the fighting forces with everything that they needed to fight an effective battle it included it included to issue them with extreme cold climate clothing because there are special clothings that are worn there ammunition all kinds of ammunition right from small arms 
still before semination. I was issuing all kinds of spears for the vehicles, the vehicles that were taking these jawans to the front lines. You think of an item that is required and my job as a logistics officer was to provide it to them in real time. This was the time that I am so proud of in my life that not, notwithstanding the fact that I was pregnant at that time, I only did my duty as soldier of mother nation. I was a soldier, I was an officer. My job was, my job was to conduct the logistics operations right and I did that. Today, so proudly, I wear the medals on my chest, the two medals that I got from Battle of Kargil, and also a thumping battle report. That, my dears, is equality. So today, when I speak to all the bright young girls out there, I want to tell you, if you want, if you want to speak the language of equality, you will have to learn to walk on a difficult path, on a harder path. You will have to learn to be on the sharpest edge of knife and be there and prove yourself. And then yours will be the glory and yours will be the sunshine. Be your own hallmark. I always say this. Be your own hallmark. Be your own chandelier. Love yourself, respect yourself. And by loving yourself, I certainly do not mean to spamming Instagram with your own photographs and Facebook with your own posts and looking for validations. No, no. When I say, when I say that love yourself, I mean generate a kind of credibility in yourself. Do not look for validation. You know what is the problem these days? People look for validation from those who are not valid at all. So many likes and so many followers you will get, but you hardly know all those people who are following you or who are giving you likes or who are you know, giving you the, the accolades. No. Be credible. Do you know the difference between these two words? Credibility and validation. Credibility comes from within and it radiates outwards into the world. Validation comes from outside and comes to you. So it's like an hourglass, two inverted out, uh, hourglasses. So try to generate credibility in yourself. Validation, if it has to come, will come automatically. When I heard the topic of today's event, from boots on ground to flying fighter jets, so apt, so apt. Do you know, women cadet number one, Major Priya Jhingan, she came from a very small place a small place near Shimla. And this girl always wanted to join army. When she joined army, when she wanted to join army and when there was this advertisement, the first time advertisement calling for the lady officers, she was a law graduate and hence she qualified only for JAG branch, you know, Judge Advocate General branch, which takes advocates. There were only two vacancies. She spoke to her sister and she said, I want to join Jack Branch, but there are only two vacancies. And do you know what her sister told her? Her sister told her, I wonder who the second one is going to be. That, that is the kind of support group each one of you must look at. You know, surround yourself with the people who constantly egg you on. Develop a kind of support system that fills you in with positivity. 
when Priya Jindam's sister said, I wonder who that second one would be. She was automatically sending her the message that you are there. You will be a part of army. And rightly so, Priya Jindam came to army. Not only this, she was women cadet number one in academy. When I wanted to join army, I wanted with all my heart to be part of it. Worked hard for it. I was there. So if I can be there, then you can be there. Well, army is just one of the career choices. But let me tell you, it's a mighty good one. Always have two things, if I may say. One is focus and one is resilience. Do you know that in army, resilience is rated above excellence? It is a human quality which is rare. It is a human quality which can be developed. It is a human quality that will make you achieve your dreams. If you have the power to dream and if you have the resilience to move on and if you have the focus to keep on the path, then you are going to be wherever you dream yourself to be in this whole wide world. Have you heard of Lieutenant Commander Abhilash Tommy? Lieutenant Commander Abhilash Tommy is a naval officer who has done around 53,000 nautical miles in the, you know, in, in, in the sailing career of Navy. Along with that, he is also a pilot in Navy. And he has flown many reconnaissance missions for Navy. Now, this officer was selected to do circumnavigation of globe in a small sailboat. Not only this, it was to be a solo circumnavigation. This means he was to be alone in that boat and that too non-stop, non-stop around the world and he completed it in 151 days. Now, after this, he was filled with great courage to take on bigger challenges. And so he took part in the Golden Globe race in 2018. Now, when he was part of that Golden Globe race and he was running third in that international race, a, a huge storm broke out into the sea. He was on a small sailboat which was thrashed from all the sides. And by the time the raging and howling sea got quiet, Abhilash Tommy's boat was broken middle of the sea and his boat was broken. He was himself previously injured. Not only this, not only, you know, minor injuries, but major ones. His spine had broken. Now he was lying there immobile. But that is the power of resilience that he did not give up. He remembered and recollected each part of the training that he did. And he kept on sending distress signals. That was part of his training. Luckily, one of the French ships that was going from that side got that distress signal and rescued him. Brought him back where he underwent multiple surgeries. And Abhilash Tommy was fit and fine. But now, Dil hai ki manta nahi. You know what he's doing now? Abhilash Tommy has resigned from Navy this year in January, 2021 Jan, because he wants to give complete attention to Golden Globe Race 2022. He wants to finish the unfinished agenda. That is the power of resilience, that no matter what, I am going to move on with focus. Do you know a story of resilience? Again, in the same setting. Six naval officers, all ladies, in a small little boat called Tarini, circumnavigated the globe. Six girls 
in a boat going and sailboat mind you not a power motor boat it is a sailboat these girls went around the globe and came back created history so if you can think it if your heart can visualize it and your mind can believe it then you can do anything well there are no gender biases in nature so why should there be any gender bias in our life each one of you is a budding leader each one of you will achieve great heights to the world and let me tell you my dears that leadership is gender neutral leadership never sees whether you are a man or a woman if you are a leader if you know how to lead your people it doesn't matter whether you are a man or a woman be a leader break the barriers just keep going one step at a time one step at a time and you will find that all the problems will slowly slowly melt away wilt away you know there's a complete recipe to success and it says that 70% comes from hard work 70% comes from hard work 10% comes from your faith 10% comes from planning and 10% comes from mindset so today i ask each one of you to develop a mindset a positive mindset develop a warrior mindset what is meant by a warrior mindset means never say it's over never give up never say that i cannot do it just move on one step at a time keep going on move on move on move on there will be many situations when it will be very easy for you to just take a back seat but if you want to move on ahead in life then you will find inner reserves of strength to climb over that you remember i told you that 10 foot high wall if i did not have the resolve i would not have been able to do it i did it only because i wanted to do it only because i did not want to call it quits well sometimes and this is this is um, a very important lesson i want to share with each one of you if you have the power to focus only on your betterment see sometimes what will happen you may think of a career for yourself you may not get that life but if you are focused to achieve something great in life you will reach there i wanted to join army but i could not be army officer forever because at that time permanent commission was not on cards for women so i had to leave after a point of time when i left army i thought oh god i am not good for anything what will i do now i am an army officer i cannot take on any small assignment i could have just lied on my past glories and could not have done anything i did not do it because i did not want to call quits after i left army i kept moving from when one, one contournament to another with my husband who was a, who is a serving army officer and so we kept moving every two to and a half years from field areas to peace areas we have seen it all and believe you me every two years the meter would start from zero har baar zero se meter shuru har baar do saal mein nayi naukri dhoondni but i knew it for sure naukri koi bhi mile kaam mai koi bhi karu 
I am going to do it to the best of my ability. And I am going to leave a mark. In one such posting, I got to work with Asha School. Asha School is a school for specially able children. Do you know, more than I could give them, they gave me a new way to look at life. Because whenever I would take a new work, I had to develop a new skill set. And here, in Asha school set, there was no new skill set I could develop rather than focusing on my patience, rather than focusing on what these kids do not have. I started focusing on what they have. So they taught me that ability lies in the mind. What you consider disability, they have converted into ability. And I started seeing ability everywhere. They taught me another thing. To smile in every situation. To keep a smiling face on. Not to get perturbed. Not to say it's over. Just move on. In another posting, I worked in counterinsurgency ops areas with a Ministry of Defense project. And here we had to go in counterinsurgency trodden areas from one village to another, speaking to the ex-servicemen and asking them to join the facilities of the polyclinics that are is opening for them. This task was actually quite life-threatening at some points of time. And uh, if I have some you know, uh, time again with you, I would like to share with you, all, you know, the different experiences that I had. But I will just share with you today the learnings. The learning was tenacity of purpose. If you have started something, then you don't have to leave it till the time. You complete the entire way. Jab tak aap ke apne haat mein jitna hai kisi cheez ko karne ke liye, aap us pe apni puri himat nahi dal dete hai, tab tak aap usko nahi chhodiye. Well, very interesting incidents. I was with Symbiosis International University and I was looking after their uh, uh, administration for 13 campuses span India. Very different experience, very different experience from whatever I had done earlier. This was quite new, but it taught me to improvise and adapt and move on ahead. So what I want to tell you that if you are, if you are getting the chances to go from one career profile to another, just brace it with open arms. Because you are going to come out as winners. You are going to develop new skill sets. You are going to come out with new experiences. You are going to come out as a winner every time. If you look at my resume, it is a rainbow. It is quite interesting, the kind of jobs I have done, the kind of works I have done. But everything has added to the person that I am. And today, in a complete leap of faith, I have decided to become a motivational speaker. I have decided to become a leadership multiplier. I have decided to make an impact to youth. And that is why I'm here today speaking to you. Gives me no greater joy than to share my life experiences with the youth, because I know, I know that you understand its meaning. It was my dream to come to RB, but that dream did not stay forever. So, if your dream doesn't stay with you forever, don't lose heart. Who knows? Something great is waiting for you somewhere. Yeah. So I, I, I just want to share with everyone out there that if you really decide to do what you want from your life just go all out ahead and do it 
there are wonderful examples there are wonderful examples uh, if i may share a few these days we have seen indian air force is getting lot of new flight jets we have seen that they have got rafale we have seen that lot of upgradations are being done and do you know each one of you out there must know the names of few great ones sarla thakral this was the first lady pilot of india we have seen that durva panerji was the first pilot who joined indian airlines in 1956 we have seen harita kaur who came to indian air force in the year 1993 and created history by being the first lady pilot to fly over the height of 10000 feet we all have seen the movie gunjan saxena's movie and also shri vidya these two lady officers were flying the choppers cheetahs in the war zone of kargil they were doing the evacuation sorties and also air dropping the supplies to the forward posts the girls did not call it quits bhavna kant the the indian air force pilot who was there on the republic day parade this time she is the first lady officer who is flying mig 21s the bisons do you know interestingly this is the same aircraft which was flown by wing commander abhinandan varthman flight lieutenant avni created history when she became the first pilot to fly supersonic jet flight lieutenant shivani is getting trained to fly rafale and very soon probably by end of this year we will see rafales being flown by a lady pilot have you heard of scorn leader minty agarwal when we commander abhinandan varthman was flying and creating havoc to the pakistani air force who had flown into our uh, air space minty agarwal mit was his eyes and ears she was guiding him from the one moment go she was the one who was guiding him about the air situation which aircraft is where what position to take and also which ammunition to prime and propel and move on and how to engage the enemy minty agarwal became the first lady officer to get yuddh seva medal and very interestingly india is planning to have the manned space mission also equipped with one of the women air force pilots very near in future so who knows one of you out there may be the one on one of those space missions in one of those gaganyaans so yours is the future you are the provider of joy and happiness to your families and your community never say that life is difficult no life is never difficult because solutions are always there life was meant to be difficult because had it not been difficult then what was the joy in all of this today how am i telling you all these stories because life is meant to be enjoyed with challenges tackling the challenges moving on ahead passion on regardless so with this i would like to end my talk today i have taken a lot of time i know but there is so much to speak there is so much to say there are a lot of stories i keep sharing lot of stories with my youtube channel shorya tales so if you are interested in listening to lot of fogy stories do tune into my channel and listen to the stories of brave hearts jai hind god bless thank you so much ma'am for such a motivational session 
It has really stimulated each one of us to achieve greater heights in our lives. I would now call Ms. Nisha, the president of NSS Shivani College, to address the questions of the audience. Thank you, Muskan. First of all, I would like to thank Yashika, ma'am, for such a wonderful talk. And I'm sure that you have lit a great spark among every listeners, a great motivating spark. So uh, we have a few questions from our audience. Uh, the first one is, what would be the three qualities which you would like everyone of us to have to become a better civilian? Better civilian? Uh, I will I will reframe it. I'll say a better citizen. Whenever whenever you talk of being citizen and youth is the great future, and I am so proud of it, so proud of it. I cannot tell you when I see the the young boys and girls of your age just talking so sensibly with all the information in your hands. First quality that I think you should inculcate is patience. Patience to listen to all sides. Listen to all pros and cons. Listen to all sides of views and then take a balanced decision. So first quality that you must have is patience. Second quality that you must have is well, I will not say must have, I will say it is desirable, is to have an ear to listen. Develop the habit of listening. Because when you listen, you are trying to absorb what the other person is trying to convey. And you are not in a hurry to come up with your own answer. So when you are doing this, you are actually generating the whole process of information to be absorbed. This increases your emotional quotient because you are not in a hurry to answer. You are giving yourself time to imbibe. This gives you more knowledge. This gives you more emotional quotient. And third quality that I really want all of you to develop is how to fight adversity. You know, when I talk of resilience every time, resilience means bouncing back after you are hit. And I will not say bounce back. I will say bounce forward. So whenever you are put through an adversity, bounce forward. So you take a hit and you bounce back. Now the key is to reduce the time of rising up every time you fall. Falling is not a mistake. Falling is not a failure. Not rising up after you fall, that is a failure. So these are the three qualities I want the youth to have. Patience, developing a habit to listen, and third, improving on your adversity quotient and rise up every time you want. Have I answered the question? Yes, sure, ma'am. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, another question is, ma'am, in some parts of India, women are still not allowed to join the army. What do you think can change the mentality of such people? In every part of India, girls are allowed to join army. It is the people sometimes who have a, you know, have an agenda, who have a fixed mindset. But again and again, I will tell you, when I talk of Avni, Flight Lieutenant Avni, who has flown supersonic jet, she comes from Riva, a small little place in Madhya Pradesh. When I talk of Bhavna Kant, the girl who is flying mid-21s comes from Jihanabad in Bihar. I came from Bareilly in Uttar Pradesh, small little place. The girl who is being trained to fly Rafael, flight lieutenant Shivani, comes from a village near Varanasi. 
so none of these girls have come from tier 1 cities they have come from hinterlands of india they have come from small little places they have had to fight to change the mindsets and now let me tell you when army has brought in the permanent commission for lady officers then army has become a very good career choice in my view it should not only be a career choice it should be choice of passion but since army is now permanent commission for women more and more girls are certainly going to move on ahead because this will help in changing mindsets and also when we talk of small little places we know that army has also started taking girls as soldier general duties in core of military police so girls who are just 12th pass they can also join army as soldiers so army is moving on ahead and it is just a matter of time when more and more girls when more and more uh, girls are able to change the mindsets of the people who are not so open so it's just a matter of time yes ma'am uh, ma'am who has been the guiding light and impacted you most in your career and how oh well two people <laughs> two people first my mother as i shared with you that i lost my father very early in life uh, i was just 7 years old my mother grew up three sisters with lot of strength with lot of courage there was a very there was a, a sort of uh, unspoken rule in our in our home that uh, no conversation of marriage is going to be there you know my mother who became widow at a very young age realized the importance of career realized the power of empowerment of girls so she always told us that first you equip yourself into getting a career first you have a career first you become that much empowered that you are able to earn your living and after that marriage is a natural progression you will get married after that so before marriage my mother was the guidance the the force the beacon and after that it's been my husband he has totally supported he has totally shown me the way so he has been like of course pushing me on and also holding my hand and taking me forward so i think uh, uh it's been a wonderful life with great beacons of hope with great uh, what do you say rudders in my life and i'm very very thankful to god it's a great feeling of gratitude yeah thank you so much ma'am and i guess that's it because you are getting getting more appraisal appraisal messages rather than questions <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, so yeah i would like ms khan to take over the session uh, thank you so much for thank you question. so much ma'am uh, i now invite supriya ma'am to give the formal vote of thanks thank you uh, so much muskan uh, now uh, first thing i would like to say uh, like uh, informally ma'am i have been your biggest fan i think uh, for the past uh, two and a half years oh. and uh, i remember it was somewhere in 2018 and uh, i was just uh, it was a slow phase in my life and there were some career issues and also i just googled one thing that uh, how to overcome uh, this failure and there i was trolling certain videos and i came across uh, one of your video and uh, that actually boosted me like anything and uh, i can honestly say that you have been such an inspiration to so many people like me and i'm sure today uh, in your session all the students must have learned a lot from you so uh, and i really wish that this was uh, like this could have been a physical uh, meet where we could meet in the college but nevertheless i'm sure that you will surely spare some time in future for us as well and now <laughs> coming to the formal vote of thanks so uh, on behalf of the whole nss team uh, i would like to thank uh, tyagi mampo taking out her valuable time for all of us and sharing so many great stories 
uh, and uh, for all those who really want to listen more and more from her you can just google you can uh, go on youtube and you can uh, see her videos they are so inspiring and there was this latest tedx talk which i saw a few months back and it actually gave me goosebumps we i i honestly uh, want to salute you ma'am for all the things which you have done and you have been such an inspiration not only for women but all those people who really think that okay now i have failed so i think uh, that is it but you have actually made us realize that uh, failure is not the stop and you rightly mentioned that uh, if you have passion if you have the tendency to do the hard work and if you have good determination you can surely succeed so thank you once again ma'am uh, thanks from not only a faculty of shivaji college but also from your fan so thank you uh, once again for sparing your time with us Uh, and i would also like to thank our respected principal sir who has always been a support to the whole nss team uh, i would like to thank ruchira ma'am because uh, she was the one uh, who initiated your name and i was like uh, really excited to meet you uh, virtually today so thanks a lot uh, thank you ruchira ma'am and thanks to all the team uh, all the students especially of nss you all have done a great job today so uh, thank you all and of course the participants you have been a wonderful audience uh i am sure that you would you enjoyed this session and i once again request ma'am that if we ever uh, if we ever call you then please try to spare some time for us again in a uh, future thank you so much ma'am thank you i will i will i will just i will just take half a second and uh, tell you that uh, you uh, you have given me the reason to go on you have actually given me a reason to go on and make me believe that i am on the right path what i am doing is not something which is only in my mind that i want to do it so i am doing it no you have shown me the real life impact uh you you have made me sentimental which is not very often so thank you very much uh, i will certainly come to your college whenever you call me let us just hope that things span out normally and we can have face to face interactions i will certainly be there call me any time and it would be my pleasure thank you so much thank you so much means a lot thank you thank you ma'am thank you so much best to have you really Rishira, blessed ma'am thank you so much my name is urvashi ma'am urvashi ma'am urvashi ma'am thank you thank you so much to join us today yes. yeah but surely uh, she means a lot to all of us and she is the one who is a, you know forcing uh, and guiding light basically behind all of us and all the sessions so we are really thankful to her please, please convey my big thank you to her as well surely ma'am surely